Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and this is my game dev review of Valheim, a game made with Yinti. This is the game that is currently blowing up on Steam, already sold over 2 million copies in under 2 weeks, insanely successful, and if you want to be successful as a game developer, then you absolutely need to study this game, there's a ton you can learn from it. Here I will do a brief review of the game and then give you my thoughts from my point of view as a game developer, as well as give you some tips for how you can make your own games better. If you want to learn more about game design, check the full playlist and follow the Steam Curator page for all the game dev reviews. My goal with this series is to give you some great game design tips using these games as examples, and also to highlight excellent games made with Unity so you know the only limits to building the game of your dreams is really just your own skills. Check all the reviews in the Steam Curator or the playlist. Oh and by the way, the latest Unity Mega Bundle ends in a few days, so if you want $800 worth of awesome assets at 96% off, then check the link in the description before it ends. So Valheim is a Viking inspired open world game focused on free exploration and emergent gameplay. It features survival crafting mechanics set in a unique procedurally generated world. Fight through this world alone or play with up to 10 friends and conquer Valhalla together. You are dropped off on this brand new world and begin harvesting simple resources and fighting small enemies. Then you craft some better tools, continue gathering more resources and exploring the world until you find the perfect spot for your very first base. The game features a robust building system adaptable to any terrain, you can build anywhere, place down some walls, put up a ceiling and make a nice fire and sleep through the night. Then wake up, continue gathering more items, exploring this brand new world and finding more foes to fight. It's an RPG where you level up your stats as you do your actions. The world is split into several biomes with increasingly higher difficulty and new enemies. It features lots of survival mechanics. If you're not well dressed, you're going to be cold. If you're wet, it's going to punish your stamina. If you're hungry, you won't be as strong. All of those mechanics really make you feel like you're part of this world without ever being annoying. Visually, the game has a very unique look. It blends modern techniques with some low resolution textures. The lighting effects make it look gorgeous and combined with the pixelated textures, it really gives it a unique look. You can definitely spend a ton of time just enjoying the sights either from a mountain or relaxing sailing in the sea. All of this, and yet the game has only just launched in early access. I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how this improves over time. What they have here is already a very complete game. This is a great example of a massive open world game with a giant procedurally generated world and it's all made with Unity. And they've already found massive success with over 2 million copies sold in under 2 weeks. It's always inspiring to see indie developers finding such massive success. If you're into survival and crafting open world exploration games, then this is an excellent new entry in the genre. Now here's my thoughts from my point of view as a game developer, as well as some takeaways for how you can improve your own games. I will go through each point, highlighting what I think the game does well and what lessons you can learn from it. And for the very first lesson, I'm just going to briefly mention it since I already covered it in detail in the previous game dev review and I don't want to repeat myself too much. As I said, the game is out in early access. The last video was reviewing Dyson Sphere Program, which is another game that was also massively successful and also came out in early access. That game, just like this one, is extremely well polished. So what I mentioned in that video that I'll briefly mention here is how if you're working on an early access game, then this is your competition. This is the level of quality that you need to hit. Nowadays, players who buy games even in early access already expect a high level of polish and a complete experience. Now, part of the reason why the game is so good is because the combat and basic action just feel so awesome, everything is super punchy, even just a basic unarmed punch feels like it has a bunch of power. Same thing for basic gathering, just punching a tree branch, it is all so incredibly satisfying. It's all about the animation timing, combined with just the right amount of screen shake along with some really punchy sound effects. Add some awesome particle effects when you take down an enemy and it all feels really excellent. This is without a doubt one of the main reasons why this game is doing so well. The very first actions you take in the game are extremely satisfying which gives you a dopamine hit right away. So the lesson for you is make your basic start actions as satisfying as you possibly can. Remember the very first minutes are extremely important, you need to hook the player right away. This game is undoubtedly a masterclass in game feel. And this next one builds upon the previous one, but it's so good that I really just had to mention it. Now I have to say that usually I'm not someone who values sound design too much. For me, as long as there are sound effects in music, I don't usually notice if they're good or not. However, in this game, I would say the sound design is definitely excellent. Every punch feels extremely powerful, swinging the pickaxe feels like wielding a shotgun. Sound design is undoubtedly one of the reasons why this game has found massive success. If you replace these sound effects with something weak, the game would certainly feel about 90% less satisfying. 
By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. And for the next lesson, I'm sorry for saying the word satisfying so much, but I really do believe that this is the main reason why the game has found so much success. The effects for leveling up a skill are also very satisfying. Again, great sound design with some awesome particle effects. And it happens instantly on your very first jump. So as soon as you enter into the game, within the first 30 seconds, just by randomly pressing buttons, you'll certainly get it. So once again, another example of just how much they polished the very first 5 minutes of playtime, which is undoubtedly one of the main reasons why this game is so successful. Then in terms of gathering, sadly the game takes the approach that I'm not a fan of. It forces you to click every time you want to swing. Now this makes perfect sense with regards to combat, you want to keep the player engaged and keep them actively swinging. However, when it comes to gathering, you really should make it easier for the player. So one simple tip is don't give your players carpal tunnel. And this is something that the game does have in another area. In order to grab items from the floor, you'll look at it and press E. However, if you hold down E and move the mouse, it does grab whatever you're looking at. So chopping some wood and gathering some resources should work very much in the same way. Related to that, it should be clear when you're making progress while gathering resources. In the beginning, when you're starting out, you're unarmed. The only way to gather resources is by punching a tree. You need to punch a tree about 10 times to actually take it down and there's no indication of progress. That might confuse some players into thinking that they're not doing it right. Maybe it could have a slight progress bar or a health bar on trees and bushes. Or if that's too immersion breaking, then simply changing the visual slightly. Just anything at all to show the player that they're doing the correct action. You should always give the player feedback. The player should never be questioning if the game received a certain input, it should always be very clear. When you try to pick up an item, it says in the corner how many you picked up recently. However, it does not say the total. Since the player is likely gathering items to reach a certain total to craft something, then it would be very useful to also say the current total. Always try to think from the point of view of the player. Try to guess what the player would be thinking while playing your game. In this case, it would be as simple as adding a total in parentheses. Easy to add and just one more tiny improvement. The building system is a bit fiddly. It's freeform instead of a grid system, which means it's adaptable to any kind of terrain. That's an excellent system for a game with procedurally generate terrain. However, the snapping is definitely quite fiddly. There's a tiny handful of pixels that you need to select to enable proper snapping. You should always make it as easy as possible for the player to interact with your systems. Building is the center point of this game, so it should really be as polished and as satisfying as the combat is. Then the rules for building a house are also not entirely clear. The game has a proper shelter mechanic. You get some buffs if you're under what the game identifies as a shelter. However, the floorboards don't seem to count as a roof, at least not by themselves. I first assumed that I could make a roof out of floorboards since they are flat pieces, whereas all roof pieces are at an angle. So due to that, I was having some issues making my first shelter. I couldn't use the workbench no matter what until I realized that it needed a specific roof tile. Later on, I found some abandoned buildings that do count as a shelter with some floorboards, but some of them don't, so I'm still not clear on those rules. So as a whole, I'm a big fan of the shelter mechanic, but it does need a bit more explaining on the actual rules. The game has something which I definitely love, which is when you swing the axe in order to gather some wood, it doesn't lock into one specific tree or bush. Instead, it hits whatever objects are within the swing area. Personally, I find this system much better than the method that so many games we use, which is to do a raycast and identify the single object to gather from. With this system, it adds an element of player skill to the simple action of gathering resources, which keeps the player more engaged, even when doing basic actions. Here's one simple tip, whenever possible add physics into your world. One of the reasons why the simple action of gathering wood feels so good is because the tree doesn't just disappear and give you wood, instead big trees get chopped into logs and then those logs fall down with accurate physics. The falling log can then fall on top of smaller bushes and turn them into wood, or it can fall on top of an enemy or even yourself and deal some damage. Adding physics is a simple thing but it makes the world feel much more grounded. One excellent mechanic is how you can tag any position on the map, give it an icon and some text. This is especially excellent in this game because the world is procedurally generated. Every game sees a completely different world, so it's up to you to make sense of this completely undiscovered world. There are random abandoned buildings scattered throughout the maps, some abandoned huts, some castles, some altars with runes, so you can for example tag them to occupy them, make your new base, or just tag any interesting things you find. It's a simple mechanic to add and it perfectly matches with the random generation of the world. So for you, if you have a procedural world, consider adding this mechanic. Another interesting mechanic is how when you die, you drop all items on death. This is always a simple way to add some stakes into your game, but then it's up to you to decide how intense you want it to be. 
In this case, the items stay where you left them, so if you pick them up, you don't permanently lose items. And also the game gives you a nice temporary buff after you die. Your stamina usage goes down and you take less damage from physical attacks. However, when you die, you also do lose some skill points. But, again, you get another buff when you respawn and that says that if you die, you won't lose any more skill points. So it really is up to you, the designer of your game, to define just how high stakes and how punishing you want game death to be. In this case, the designers weren't going for a super hard as nail punishing system, so they combined the death penalty with some bonuses to let you get back on normal. The game is an RPG, which features areas of different levels, which is always interesting, but there are no visible numbers, so if you stumble upon a high level area, then you might not even be aware of it. For this game, hiding numbers is a good thing, it keeps the world more immersive, However, in my case, as soon as I went accidentally into a high level area, I had a wolf chasing me and I could not escape and ended up dying. Again, goes back to how punishing you want your game to be. Based on how they designed that, it seems their goal wasn't to make an intensely difficult game. So in keeping with that design, I think there should be some sort of system to keep the player from dying accidentally by going into a high level area. Something as simple as having the enemy miss their hits, or simply hit the player, but leave them at 1 HP and then pull back, at least on the very first encounter. Remember that the player experience is all that matters. Making the player feel like they just barely escaped death is much more satisfying than instantly losing to a super high level enemy. Another interesting mechanic is the rest mechanic. Whenever you're in a shelter under your roof, if you stay there for a while, you get a nice restful buff. It gives you extra stamina and health regen. It's a very large bonus, so you're definitely encouraged to have the buff active at all times. But the buff also has a time limit. So what this essentially does is it forces you to return to base or find a shelter every once in a while. If you want to encourage the player to feel a connection to their home base, then this is a simple and effective way to do it. And as always, remember that bonuses feel better than punishments. Note how here they give you a positive buff while you're rested, as opposed to a negative buff while unrested. Always try to present your mechanics in a positive way. Alright, so those are my thoughts on Valheim, a game made with Unity. I very much enjoyed playing this one. I hadn't played a survival and crafting game in quite a while, so this came out at just the right time for me. If you want to learn how to make your games as satisfying as possible, then I highly recommend you pick this one up and study what makes it so satisfying. Hooking the player as quickly as possible is an absolute must, and I think this game is definitely a masterclass when it comes to game feel. If you want to learn more about game design, check out the playlist and follow the Steam Career page for all the game dev reviews. My goal with this series is always to give you some great game design tips using these games as examples. And also to highlight excellent games made with Unity so you know the only limit to building the game of your dreams is really just your own skills. Go check out all the reviews in the Steam Curated page or on the playlist. Oh and by the way, the latest Unity Mega Bundle ends in a few days, so if you want $800 worth of awesome assets at 96% off, then check the link in the description before it ends. If you enjoyed this video and found my thoughts on game design helpful, consider liking and subscribing. This video is made possible thanks to these awesome supporters. Go to patreon.com slash unitycodemonkey to get some perks and help keep the videos free for everyone. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.